full screen. Good day and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today, Smart Parking, Breakthrough Technologies Transforming the Parking Industry. We will have two presenters in today's session. Um, from Enrix, we have Mark Pendergrass. He's our Senior Director of Product Management for Connected Car Services. And then from SBD, we have our guest, Jeffrey Hanna, Director of SBD North America. Before we get started, I'm going to review a few housekeeping items. Everyone is muted and will be throughout the webinar. If you have any questions, please submit them through the GoToWebinar questions window just to the right of your screen. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and you will receive an email within 24 hours of the webinar with a link to the recording. <laughs> also be posted um, to our website in the automotive solutions section. Uh, without further ado, I'll turn over the presentation to Mark Pendergrass with Inrex. Thank you. Good morning, good evening, hello everybody. Uh, this is Mark Pendergrass from Inrex. Um, there's been a lot of exciting things happening here at the company uh, with regards to parking, one of the key initiatives for, uh, for Inrex. And what I'd like to do in this presentation is walk you through a quick update on, on all those happenings and, and new initiatives that we've been working on and then turn over to my guest presenter here um, who has some uh, very interesting study results to share with the broader industry on our parking data. And that will be Jeff Hanna, who will come on in a couple minutes. So let's kick off and uh, walk you guys through um, all the great things that have been happening in the parking space here at Enric. I think it's probably good to start and provide an, an overview of um, what our parking ecosystem overall is and what we're actually trying to do uh, here at Enrix. Uh, much like with traffic, uh, which is one of our core products in market for many years now, um, here at Enrix, what we're trying to do is connect sources of data, whether they come from cities or parking operators or even universities, and collect, connect them with users of data, either mobile customers in their cars, uh, embedded navigation users of, of drivers in their cars, Anyone who is actually looking for parking, for example, has clearly a use for parking data and exposing them through a very simple, easy to use interface, whether it's a database or an API for our customers to use. Now, in terms of why we're focusing on parking, clearly parking is one of those key uh, navigation issues that everyone is affected by. When they're traveling to, from point A to point B, Clearly, they need to find a parking at the end of their journey. And parking is a growing problem. As traffic congestion increases and as, as urban areas get more dense, clearly there are more and more drivers looking for parking and that causes problems for them. Now, many studies have shown that close to 30% of overall urban traffic is caused by drivers looking for parking. That has many ramifications on society and the environment. Not only does it increase the time it takes for someone to find a, a relevant parking spot, but it also increases um, gas emissions and thus reduces overall quality of life for drivers and citizens inside of those cities. What that does, of course, add more time and much more um, uh, pain points for the drivers as they look for parking. Our studies have shown that it contributes up to 20 minutes of average time uh, for a user to, to get to their final lesson because of that search for parking. And that can add up over quite a bit of, uh, over, the, over the year. 20 minutes per time you look for parking space can add up to close to 40 to 30, 40 to 50 hours uh, a year when looking for parking. That's a lot of lost productivity and a lot of emissions going up in the atmosphere. Clearly this is something that we can solve and something that Enrix has lots of expertise to bring to, bring to the market. Now, because of these pain points, consumers have responded pretty, uh, pretty clearly and told us, as well as other industry uh, uh, analysts, that um, they want a solutions for this. When asked by uh, Frost & Sullivan, uh, another uh, leading market research company, what kinds of services they'd like to find in a connected car, close to 40% of drivers 
have responded very clearly that they'd like to see some form of park, real time parking information showing up in their connected car and providing them guidance to finding parking spaces. Clearly they're asking for these kinds of solutions and INRIX is delivering. And how do we deliver? Well, clearly we focus on one of the key aspects of, uh, of our parking uh, service, which is providing information on off-street parking lots. And that's what we'll be uh, talking about today. In fact, over the last couple years, you've seen quite a bit more focus on increasing coverage of lots in our overall database. And we'll cover this in more detail, but at a high level, we see quite a bit of dramatic increase between 2013 when we first launched our parking service and 2015 at the end of the year, where you see quite a bit more increase, close to 50, 60% growth in overall lots in our database. So this commitment to smarter parking is something that INRIX backed up with with uh, acquisition um, last summer. We acquired one of our key suppliers of parking data, a company called ParkMe, that focused on the parking industry exclusively. We're in the process of integrating all that data and making that available to our customers, not just in North America where we were using their data originally, but now on a global basis. And what is that acquisition, very strategic to INRIX, bring to the overall market? How does that impact you as a customer? Clearly it provides us with superior control of the quality from end to end of that database, as well as increasing that coverage of parking, um, parking lots and parking spaces. Now we have access to up to 64 countries worth of data. A huge increase over previous. We also, of course, because we control that end-to-end -end solution, we have much more capability in bringing products to market quicker. So time to market is another key consideration. And because of our global approach, we offer customers one-stop shop, one contract that they can use on a global basis. So what's our overall vision for parking? And how does the ParkMe acquisition fit into that? As we've said from day one with our parking service, what we're trying to do here is provide a completely seamless parking experience for drivers, helping them find parking options, whether it's on street or off street, and giving them directions to those options, compare those options, whether it's on price, availability, parking lot, entrance, or operating hours, and then finally, pay for your parking once you get to your parking, either through your car or on a mobile phone. And obviously providing this completely with an auto grade commitment to quality and service, up to 99.8%. We'll touch on how INRIC solves all of these needs and, uh, and, and achieves this vision in the next couple slides. Let's go into more detail about what's available through the INRIC's parking service and taking a look at the kind of data we make available to customers and consumers. At its highest level, there are two broad categories of parking um, data that we provide to customers. Off-street parking information, obviously, as its name implies, provides guidance and information on parking spaces that are located off the street, whether it's a garage or a covered space or any kind of uh, facility uh, that's publicly or privately owned. On-street parking, as its name implies, refers to all those parking meters that are located on the street and provide access to local residents as well as, um, as visitors um, to park their cars on the street. All of these different types of, uh, of, of, of parking options, we provide information on hours, entrance points, photographs, occupancy information, and of course, payment options as well to complete that seamless experience. Together, between on-street and off-street, INRIX provides a completely comprehensive view of the parking options to drivers, regardless of where they are or what they're looking for. Drilling down into the parking data itself, for each types of these parking options, they broadly categorize themselves into dynamic data and static data. Again, these names are chosen very appropriately. Dynamic data is data that provides a real-time look as to what's happening at that parking space at a particular point in time. For a parking lot, for example, we're able to provide you with guidance on 
availability options in that parking lot. How much of that lot is full? How many spaces remain empty for you to use? This kind of information is very useful for the driver because then they can go quickly to those parking lots that have the best chance of finding parking. This also applies to on-street parking services as well. We provide guidance on a block-by-block -block basis as to what lots have the highest chance of you finding parking. Static data, on the other hand, is data that doesn't change very much over time. But that's still very important for information for the driver. This includes information around rates, around operating hours, entrance points for parking lots, and payment types too. And this accounts for both on-street and off-street. This kind of information is useful for the driver to help them compare which uh, option might be the lowest cost um, for them at a particular point in time. And again, this information generally doesn't change very often from month to month. Now, the other approach that's important to point out for NRICS is that we have a global emphasis for our parking data, whether it's on street or off street. We look widely across the world and provide data on both on street and off street options in all the major areas that are of concern or of, of key uh, importance to our customers. Thanks to our Park Me acquisition and other licensing um, or arrangements, we've increased our off street parking coverage up to 64 countries. That covers well over 3,000 metro areas across the world. And now we have access to 84,000 plus verified lots. And it's very important to point out that the lots in our database are publicly non-restricted lots. And this is important because we want to guide our users to lots that they can use at any time, that they don't have to worry about getting ticketed or getting towed. These are completely unrestricted public lots that are in our database. That accounts for about 29 million spaces globally um, across all those lots in our database. And this coverage will continue to expand over time. So this is just a current snapshot of what we have. In the on-street space, we've also been quite active there in expanding coverage. We're now up to 13 cities with live, data, live coverage with both static and, and real-time data um, for availability. Thanks to licensing arrangements and partnerships like the one we announced a couple weeks ago with ParkNav, another local uh, U.S. and, and European-based company, we're now expecting to hit up to 45 cities by the end of year. This data is focused um, on a city-by-city -city basis. Unlike off-street, um, off-street uh, options obviously have a big change between cities. So we focus on a city-by-city -city rollout and make sure we have the best possible coverage and best quality data before we launch a city in a particular market. All of this coverage has led us to have very successful implementations with a number of key companies, we should point out. Companies from Audi to Lexus to Volkswagen um, to smart cars are using our um, on-street or off-street parking data today. Now, our customers are, are obviously a key, uh, um, a key proof point in, in the credibility of our parking data. But don't take our word and our customers' words for it. Independent research from companies like SBD have shown also the importance of quality in the NRIX data and how that accuracy and attention to detail has a big impact on the overall customer experience. With this, I'd like to turn over to, my, uh, to our guest today, uh, Jeffrey Hanna, who is director of SBD Research and who recently completed a survey of NRIX uh, parking data and compared it to a competitor in the market. So with that, I'd like to, uh, to turn it over to you, Jeff. Thank you so much, Mark, and good, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for your time. My name is Jeff Hanna. I'm the director of North America for SBD. SBD is a world-leading uh, knowledge partner to the automotive industry. Uh, we're an independent automotive technology research firm and we help our clients deliver connected, autonomous, and secure cars uh, globally throughout the landscape. So I was uh, pleased to uh, work with INRIX on, on this particular study, which was done completely independently here at SBD. I will uh, start with kind of an executive summary of our results and then get into our strict methodology. 
So, um, firstly, the study itself was commissioned by INRIC. So, INRIC sponsored SBD to go out and collect the data, and all data was uh, objectively analyzed here at SBD. Um, the focus of the study that I'm about to present is an accuracy study. So, we weren't out to, you know, compare coverage overall but it was really uh, the accuracy of two leading providers in the market, ParkMe versus Parkopedia. Uh, the takeaway overall is that Par ParkMe performed much better along eight strict key attributes that we set out to find that are most important to end consumers. So in terms of our scope overall, um, we looked at five urban regions um, in Europe, specifically Germany, and here in the United States. So three cities in Germany, uh, two in the U.S. Um, and to collect all this data, um, effectively we designed the study, identified 488 parking lots that were in both databases, ParkMe and Parkopedia, so we'd have a level of comparison and then sent out trained data collectors to figure out what is the ground truth. And when I say ground truth, that means going to all these lots themselves, taking photographic evidence of all the attributes they were trained to collect and documenting that on a daily basis, uploading it back to SBD for comparison to the two companies we were uh, comparing today. So the highlights overall is that ParkMe scored 12% more accurate than Parkopedia across the leaning or core attributes that are most important to end consumers. I'll get into a little bit on, on how we did everything the date, um, and I should say that what we compared the ground truth to was the public websites of ParkMe and Parkopedia.com. So we didn't use any third-party websites, any other parking websites, uh, Google, or, or any of those tools to do the actual comparison, but it was a very simple study. We identified a core set of attributes we collected them from the field and then immediately after compared to the websites to come up with an accuracy score. And I would say when designing our study overall, uh, the eyes of the consumer ruled. Um, so if there was any sort of qualitative aspects, we really said from all of our experience what mattered most to the end consumer and scored the attributes accordingly. So Mark, why don't we um, turn ahead and I'll, I'll share with the, the audience sort of the uh, methodology that went into this. So in terms of dates, um, this was commissioned in October um, across five cities across the U.S. and Germany. And the study compared, again, accuracy rates of ParkMe versus Parkopedia versus the ground truth of, of real specialists trained by SBD in each city. Uh, the way the statistics worked is uh, we collected data from almost 500 lots across eight strict attributes. Uh, we uploaded daily data, including pictures, and then again compared those to the public websites of ParkMe and Parkopedia and you can see some of the industry confidence levels uh, that, that we can share today. So in terms of the results, um, on a per city, ParkMe outscored Parkopedia 90% to 80% accuracy overall across all parking lots. So whether it was Boston, all the way to Munich, to Stuttgart, just the overall weighted average of all the data points collected turned out to be 90% ParkMe to 82% Parkopedia. And next I'll explain what really drove 
all those attribute scores from our study. So if you look at uh, really the eight attributes that we collected, it was entrance, rates, hours, lot name, lot type, payment, height, and phone. And if you look at the groupings, um, the ones on the left we judge to be core, but at the same time, consumers have a wide range of, of interest across all the other attributes as well. So in terms of entrance, um, basically what the study measure was, did uh, both websites report the correct actual entrance um, and did it provide that information to the end consumer and did that uh, basically match up with the ground truth and on all these attributes, we effectively scored them between one and zero. And like uh, maybe that uh, professor you had in college, we were very harsh on our ratings and, and mostly uh, you had to get it right. Uh, so if your details were correct, you got a one. If you had one thing wrong, uh, you got a zero. And there was a couple in the middle that, that needed some qualitative aspects in terms of the scoring. So if I look across here, entrance uh, was the sort of widest disparity. And I would say what drove entrance differential is ParkMe did a great job of whenever presenting an entrance uh, location to the end consumer, rather than providing a postal address or just a generic address of the structure itself, they presented an entrance location for the end consumer. Rates, incredibly important. So when we talk about rates, these are the rates being charged to the consumer when they show up at a lot. So common examples of this could be what is the daily rate? What is the early bird rate? Um, what is the monthly rate? So we looked at all of the possible rates possible that leading parking lot providers provide, and we said in order to get a one, you had to have every single um, score correct in terms of rates. And again, ParkMe did an outstanding job of a 91% uh, rate. So if you think of 488 lots across five cities and how often a parking lot operator could change prices, um, extremely accurate. Um, ours um, is basically when does the lot open and close? Um, again, you had to have it 100% correct to get a one. Ours um, could be things like it's open 24 hours a day or it opens at 7 a.m. on Mondays and closes at 2 a.m. on Friday nights. So again, very, very accurate from a Park Me perspective in really uh, getting the hours correct overall. Lot name um, is sort of uh, table stakes. You, you have to get that one right. And so if, if I look at both providers scored very, very well on lot name, and again, one um, complexity of lot name is that some parking lots that we found in the field use a formal lot name like Five Star Parking or, or, or Bob's Parking Lot, and others use an address. Um, and then some use something in between. So again, we had to look at those very, very carefully against the ground truth. It, uh, Park Me came out at 95% accuracy. Um, lot type overall, here's one where we had to look at both providers. They slightly call their um, uh, terminology different, but we commonize for things like above ground, underground, subterranean, open lot, surface lot. We came up with a methodology to measure those equally and they were scored accordingly. Payment type is one we're seeing rapid change in. So Mark talked about 
Um, this idea of adding phone payments. Um, well, a lot of the lots that we went to start as coin or cash operated only, and over time, very, very quickly, have been adding credit card payments. So if you, again, look at the differential there, ParkMe did a, a good job of payment type. So in terms of payment type, we looked at things like, does it take cash or coin? Does it take checks? Does it take mobile? Um, all of those things. Um, on the uh, height restrictions, we said that the providers had to get it within one inch of getting a one or a correct score on height. Obviously, if you're driving a large SUV or a bus or a, a small truck, uh, you basically want to figure out what is the height overall of the lot itself uh, to make sure you can drive in and drive out safely. And again, highly accurate. And the final one is phone numbers. So many times we found an end consumer would want to call a lot to either check on availability or, or talk to kind of the operator there. And uh, uh, part of me did a great job at 91% of making correct phone information available. So again, uh, these are all backed by the ground truth of actually getting out there and I would say our research even went above and beyond just like snapping pictures of signs and rate cards, but where appropriate, we would go to the lot operator to get a human confirmation that everything was correct. Um, so I'm proud of uh, the work we did in, in visiting all of these lots, and, and I think the objective numbers speak for themselves. Why don't we turn now to the, uh, the market by market view and I'll quickly highlight the main cities we looked at. So starting with Boston, uh, the way we've set up these slides is sort of on the head-to-head -head comparison, uh, which provider uh, was more accurate on a per lot basis. So you can see uh, 59 to, to 13 uh, park me accuracy. And again, a lot of these uh, attributes were, were very indicative of the, the global numbers. So again, uh, very strong on things like rates and hours and really payment types where ParkMe really stood out. So turning to San Francisco, Similar story here overall. Um, again, entrance is very important in a market like uh, San Francisco where you can't just go by postal address and you need a, um, you basically need entrance information provided clearly to the end, end consumer uh, was a big driver of the accuracy rates there. And again, payment type. In, in a market like uh, San Francisco, uh, we found folks wanting to pay by phone, um, credit card. A lot of people aren't carrying cash in San Francisco. So the latest and greatest payment types in a market like San Francisco was a big one to consider. Berlin. So as we move to Berlin, uh, very, very uh, similar. Um, and you can see there, um, noticeable differences in, in, in phone and um, lot names and, and, and rate information there overall. Turning to Munich. So again, Munich, uh, rates, um, rates important. Um, and again, if you look at the head-to-head, -head, um, you know, d definitely very, very competitive market overall. Um, heights were important. And again, just getting the little things like the phone number uh, right really made a difference in a lot of these markets. And then finally on to Stuttgart. So the numbers in Stuttgart, again, very, very competitive uh, between the two providers. And again, getting payment tight uh, was very important uh, for Park Me and, and delivering a, a uh, positive customer experience. So I'll, I'll wrap up with just a little bit more detail now of our scoring methodology to kind of explain 
what was behind a lot of those numbers, but as we talked about, all properties were recorded based on the street where the respective parking lot entrance was located and not just the formal postal address. Um, so again, if you look at the Park, Park Me product, um, they've done an outstanding job of basically taking everywhere where the car enters and turning that into an entrance address. Um, as I mentioned, parking rates, again, you needed 100% of these rights to get a one. Uh, one off, you got a zero. We measured things like hourly, overnight rates, early bird, event, and you can imagine if you've gone to a, a parking lot recently, just how complex this one is to both uh, kind of set, measure, and more importantly, provide accurate information to the end consumer. Hours of operation, um, as we talked about, um, this is when we would go off signs, try and confirm a lot of this from the uh, parking lot attendant on site. Some of these were 24-7, some varied by day. So there'll be some on, on Tuesdays, they cl cl closed early, or weekends had special rates, and again, Looking at the numbers, not an easy one to cover, but overall very, very accurate. Um, I think both providers covered lot names very well. Um, again, these were either proper names or short of a proper name, credit was given uh, to the location or address where the parking structure stood. Some parking lot operators don't give their lots a proper lot name. So moving on. Uh, we will cover, oh, I mentioned lot types. So uh, PM stands for Park Me, PP for Parkopedia. And again, depending on the market, depending on the provider, um, the two providers use different terminology. And to sort of normalize that, here at SBD, we made an assumption that structure equals garage equals covered subterranean and underground would be treated equally, as well as surface and uh, not covered. So again, um, as you think about providing uh, names to your end consumers, you can see there are different ways to do that um, overall across these five cities. Um, I talked the type of payment information collected, cash and coin were treated equally, but uh, we looked at credit cards very closely, whether they accepted check, and as I mentioned, a huge ramp up in mobile payment overall. High clearance, uh, you had to get within one, uh, really one inch to be considered accurate with, with published height, um, and we did not include things like service entrances. So again, from the eyes of the consumer, uh, this was what uh, consumers would see driving into a typical lot. And then finally, uh, we looked at phone numbers. So again, if your car has ever been, um, uh, you know, locked up at a site or you wanted to make sure that um, an attendant was there or wanted to check, a phone number can be very, very helpful overall. And again, Park Me did a great job um, from a scoring standpoint of providing the correct phone number. Um, so as we uh, sort of wrap up uh, today's webinar, um, we'll be happy to take any sort of methodology questions on how we did our research. But again, it, it was an exciting study for us. It was lot by lot. And, um, you know, I think the results speak for themselves. Great. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Appreciate you um, joining us here today and walking through these results. If anything, I hope this, uh, the survey results uh, point out a couple of things. Uh, one, of course, is the complexity of the parking industry overall. I think it's something uh, for those of you uh, who are not in the parking industry, uh, are, probably don't have as much appreciation for, uh, for, but clearly parking is not as easy as it may appear on the, on the surface. Getting these kinds of details right and making sure that they're represented to the consumers is extremely important. Um, for all uh, experience of any connected car service that includes parking. 
Um, and I hope that the, everyone also realizes the, the importance behind continuing to invest in quality um, and accuracy. It's something that Inrix takes great pride in um, and is an, uh, a clear differentiator um, uh, for other efforts out in the market. So let's wrap up here our presentation with, with going into a couple high-level uh, um, sort of summary points around the benefits of, of working with NREX on, on the parking services. Our key differentiating and value adds uh, for customers. As I mentioned earlier, um, a key aspect of quality is making sure that the data in our um, uh, database is filtered um, and um, open to the general public as well as verified uh, through on-site tests. So all of our data in, uh, in our database, uh, off-street and on-street, reflect areas where the general public can park their cars. Um, it's a key important part of our, uh, of, our, of our efforts, and it's something that differentiates us from the competition who includes all parking lots in their database, regardless of restriction or general public access. So this is an important um, uh, key piece of, of, of how we uh, present our data to customers. Another key aspect of our approach to parking is working very um, strongly with industry partnerships, um, whether it's uh, cities, municipalities, or parking operators themselves, or even licensees of data, um, like our deal with ParkNav recently. Um, Inrix works very closely with the key operators in the, the parking industry to pull together uh, a comprehensive and seamless experience. It's clearly something that involves lots of good partnerships um, and, and, and strong ability to, to pull these all together in a seamless way um, through APIs that make sense to our customers. And the third key part, of obviously, as we touched on earlier today, is being recognized as a, a, an industry leader in that overall quality of the data and the accuracy of the data of, of what we provide to customers. Having independent um, survey results like uh, the SBDs today are extremely important in building the credibility for what NREX is providing the automotive and mobile industries out there. And it's something that we will continue to monitor um, over the course of time. So I hope this presentation overall has, has given you guys a very good uh, idea of what NREX has been working on on the parking industry, the overall approach to our uh, parking products, and um, uh, clearly the, the added credibility of uh, independent research showing the overall quality and accuracy of our data. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to move to the next phase of our uh, webinar, which is uh, taking your questions um, from the audience. I've seen a bunch of questions already come in uh, in uh, the last couple of minutes, and we're not going to be able to tackle all of them, but let's at least get through some of the ones that I think uh, touch on key parts and points uh, from, our, uh, from our audience. Let's start with one question about why would um, cities and parking operators uh, be interested in sharing this kind of data with, uh, with uh, aggregators um, uh, like Enrix and ParkMe. Um, now, this is a, a key point because uh, clearly, as I mentioned earlier, all of this data that we're collecting is, is done in conjunction with uh, parking operators in cities and municipalities. What's changed in the industry over the last couple of years is that Cities and operators now increasingly are coming to us wanting to share this information with us. And they're doing this for a couple of reasons. One of them, of course, is a marketing one, right? Um, they, they see us as a channel to their, to their customers to help them fill their parking, uh, parking lots and help them advertise uh, their inventory. Um, this clearly is a, a, a shared goal by both parts. We want to advertise their lots, and they want to advertise and, and, and market their lots. So we are very much aligned in, in, in making sure that their data is included in our overall database and, and thus available to um, uh, the, the broader uh, automotive industry. Um, a, a second key point is that um, operators increasingly um, and cities are, are looking to uh, maximize revenue, right? And um, they're looking increasingly at, at sophisticated tools uh, around pricing, around demand management, um, and, um, you know, obviously doing a better job of, of managing their overall inventory. Um, very much like the airline industry in the, in the 80s and 90s, they're starting to do more things around demand management to help them maximize their, uh, their real estate assets. And so having access to real-time tools from Inrix and from ParkMe 
that gives them the added ability and technology to help them uh, better manage their inventory and connect users uh, with, with their inventory. Um, uh, another question here uh, was around how do we get access to the real-time data of parking lots? Now, that clearly is something that's dependent on what the, the operators uh, and the cities make available to us. Luckily, as I mentioned earlier, um, many of these entities are already starting to invest in technology to help them better manage their inventories, whether it's uh, sensors at the entrance or whether it's smart gates that count cars as they come in, or even as simple as, uh, you know, uh, as equipping their parking lot operators or attendants um, with uh, smartphones and tablets to help count cars as they come in. Um, these are things that would have been unthinkable, you know, five, ten years ago, but now are increasingly becoming common, especially in the larger metropolitan and urban areas. So thanks to these efforts, which I would argue would be independent of what we're doing, um, this information is increasingly made available to us, um, even in the form of a real-time API um, that we can pull in and, um, and thus expose to our customers. So increasingly, you're going to see many more lots available with uh, that dynamic information in there. On the on-street side, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, there aren't central entities uh, doing occupancy and availability studies. That's something that INREX has taken on on themselves, by themselves. And we're doing that um, leveraging a couple of key sources of, of data. Um, most importantly, we're pulling in data from our own traffic, uh, 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 traffic congestion products. Today, NRIX has a, a, net, a global network of over 250 million uh, connected vehicles and devices that are sending us traffic information. If we mine that information and look at where people start and stop their journeys, of course, all done anonymously, we can extrapolate and look at where are those parking uh, spots and, and, and locations that tend to have the most, um, uh, the most activity um, on a street, for example. So this gives us a, a, a good indication of where that activity is, which we can then mathematically extrapolate occupancy values. But we do that combining it with other real-time sources of data that also is in giving an indication uh, uh, of, of parking activity, namely transactions. And this is where partnerships with companies um, that are in the mobile payments and parking space are very valuable. So we're collecting both historical and real-time transaction data um, from these entities to derive parking occupancy on a block-by-block -block basis. And the third key source of data, um, which will be increasingly important um, over time, is of course uh, data from, um, uh, from mobile platforms, whether they're uh, users of a parking application, whether they're users of our own, our own tra NREX traffic application. Um, these kinds of uh, cell phone-based activities can be very granular in terms of looking at parking activity and detecting whether someone has parked their car or is even walking back to their car after uh, finishing their, uh, uh, finishing their uh, appointment. This kind of information, both uh, on a historical basis and real time, um, allows us to, to, to extrapolate and provide uh, uh, probability of finding parking on a, on a block by block basis. So again, all that information is being uh, collected uh, today um, in 13 cities and soon expanding to 45 plus cities by end of this year. So very much a, a growing coverage uh, for on street. We have another question here about um, is, our, is our data available to customers of NREX? And the, the answer uh, 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 very clearly is yes. All of this data that we're talking about today is available um, for customers of NREX. Um, if you'd like to learn more about information um, for a licensing perspective or even to get access to uh, a demo of these products in real life, I um, would encourage you um, at the end of this uh, session to, to send us an email at, at bizdev at inrix.com or to go to our Inrix demo site um, at uh, demo.inrix.com and register uh, for free evaluation use of our data, uh, both on street and off street. Um, we definitely look forward to hearing from everybody and, and seeing uh, user feedback uh, after uh, checking out the, the data in real life. Okay, let's talk about a couple other questions here um, as they're coming in. Um, uh, if someone is asking if a recording of this session uh, will be available, and the answer to that is yes, we will be sending out a summary of this presentation with the recording and the slides. So um, you should get that from us uh, within a couple days after uh, this session. Um, so I know we talked about a lot of data here, uh, probably a lot to, to absorb. Um, we will be making this available to you offline, 
um, for you guys to look at uh, uh, on your own time. Um, let's touch on another question here. Um, what technology are you innovating to, to be able to reserve the spot with, uh, without paying ahead of time? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, today, what uh, is already available in the Park Me application, and that's a, a good test case of, of our uh, capabilities for transactions, is the ability for users to reserve a parking space, parking space at a parking lot. Um, this uh, this capability uh, today is was one that does allow you or does force you to pay for that parking um, in advance. However, um, this is often done at a discount compared to the rates that you see on the placard, for example. So there's an added benefit um, for you as a driver of reserving that space and, make, and guaranteeing that you'll have a, a place to park your car, um, but also doing it at a, at a discount. This capability of reserving for a parking space um, ahead of time is something we're rolling out into our Inrix parking APIs. Um, so you'll see that rolling out in the next couple of months. And making it available to our broader automotive uh, uh, customer base. Um, but if you want to use that technology and test it out today, you can go to the uh, PartMe application, which you can download for Android or iOS. Um, and let's uh, see if there are any other questions here that we can we can touch on. I think we've got time for at least a, a couple more. Um, is uh, what technology? Uh, so we, we covered that, sorry. Uh, what about real-time updates or how real-time are they? Um, uh, it depends on the type of data. Um, uh, the real-time um, occupancy information for off-street lots, that is updated every 15 minutes. Um, and so we, again, those are coming from feeds directly from the operators or from the cities, and we publish updates to uh, via our APIs every 15 minutes. So it's very close to, to real-time. Um, On-street parking availability, um, that is today updated on an hourly basis, um, but as we include additional uh, real-time data, uh, we hope to improve the frequency of, of those updates um, even um, in more granular terms. So definitely look for more, uh, uh, for more improvements uh, on that uh, as well. Okay, um, and let's see here. Uh, let's t one question seems to be coming from, from the UK. Looking at the Park Me website, it does include many car parks in the UK uh, with parking, char uh, parking charges, et cetera. What are your plans on improving? Um, uh, yes, one of the, the key aspects of our, 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 of our parking service is to expand um, what kind of information we have for each parking lot. Um, in the UK in particular, uh, it's an area where we're focusing on over the next uh, couple of weeks is adding in uh, uh, more density of data for the parking lots already in our, in our uh, database. Um, namely across those eight attributes that uh, Jeffrey uh, touched on earlier, uh, parking operating hours, parking rates, um, as well as restrictions. So it's clearly something that um, will be ex continue to expand um, over time. And let's see if there's a, a one more question here. Um, what is the near future for very small markets, uh, say less than 100,000 uh, population? Um, again, that, it's a, it's a two-part question because it depends on the kind of data that, uh, that you're talking about. Um, On-street parking service, as I mentioned earlier, is a, a inherently a city-by-city -city approach and one that uh, depends on quite a bit of data from the city themselves, uh, parking meter information, transaction information, et cetera. Um, that um, set expectations is going to be focused on the larger um, uh, metropolitan areas. So um, that will be a top 25 market uh, type approach per country. So it's unlikely that we'll be able to provide on-street parking service to a smaller municipality um, lower than 100K. On the off-street side, however, um, we do have some uh, good coverage today uh, in, in smaller municipalities. Um, uh, that, of course, uh, is, is a reflection of the parking infrastructure in these cities. Um, where there is a parking problem, um, where there is a need for off-street parking, um, that is where investment goes. That's where in, in industry focuses on. Um, so as uh, additional capabilities and capacities get added to, to smaller, uh, smaller towns, um, we will, of course, be tracking that and including that information in our database. 
But if you were to look at where the majority of, of off-street parking is today, and very similar to on-street, most of them are in the larger metropolitan areas that have the parking problems. And that's nothing more than a reflection of, of, of where the demand is for the industry. Okay, so um, I think I've, uh, I've, I've covered most of those questions um, uh, that we can cover today. Um, uh, but again, we, we always want to stay in touch with our customers. Um, if you have additional questions or if you have more interest in learning more about how to license this data um, for your customers, um, feel free to send us an email at uh, bizdev at inrix.com, and that's B-U-S-D-E-V at inrix.com, or visit our uh, parking products webpage at inrix.com uh, slash product slash parking. Great. Well, thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining our webinar today. Uh, very special thanks to Mark and Jeffrey for their time and expertise on connected car services as it relates to smart parking. Again, um, this webinar has been recorded, and um, you will all receive an email within one business day with that link to the recording, and it will also be made available on our website. Um, that concludes our webinar today. Thank you so much, and have a great day.